Hello friends, this video on locomotion and movement part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we know the structure of the skeletal muscles, we know the structure of the contractile proteins. So we are all set to understand the mechanism of muscle contraction. Now the mechanism of muscle contraction, that how exactly the contraction of the sarcomere takes place, that is explained by using a theory called the sliding filament theory. So now we will understand the sliding filament theory. So what is sliding filament theory? It is a theory which explains how muscles produce force which in turn cause movement. So basically in this theory we will see that how the contraction of the sarcomere takes place. Now when sarcomere contracts what happens the entire muscle experiences a contraction. Now what happens when the muscle experiences a contraction? A force is produced. For example when you take a spring if you press the spring very close to each other what happens? Then if you leave it it expands right why because when you actually press the spring so hard a force gets produced because of which later a work is done which results in expansion so a similar thing happens even in the movements which take place in our body so when the muscles contract a force is produced and that force in turn is used to cause movement where the joints act as a pivot. So that we will talk later. First let us see how muscles cause contraction. So that is our agenda in the sliding filament theory. So this is known as sliding filament theory because uh, we will talk about the filaments here. We, we saw that when we talk about contraction we are going to talk about the actin filaments and myosin filaments. So we will see that during uh, this process of contraction the thin filaments slide over the thick filaments and that is why the name sliding filament theory. <coughs> Now the question is who all participates or who all plays a role in this uh, process of muscle contraction. So who plays a role in this process? Calcium ions play a very important role. In fact, they are the main initiator of this process. ATP which is adenosine triphosphate which is made up of adenosine diphosphate and inorganic phosphate. Actin and myosin. So these are the main uh, you can say like how you have actors, the main lead actors in a film. Similarly here, they are the lead actors in the sliding filament theory, which will explain the process of muscle contraction. So let us get started with the muscle contraction process. Now the question is, what initiates the process of muscle contraction? So from where does this entire process start? For example, now when do you contract your muscle, when do you make a movement? Let us suppose you uh, stretch your hand out to say somebody hello. So when do you do that? When you think that you want to say that person hello. So who tells you that okay you have to stretch out your hand to wave or to say hello to that person? It is your brain. So the first step would be a signal from the central nervous system. So the central nervous system is the one who decides okay what is to be done when if you want to uh, say slap somebody because you are very much angry with that person who tells you that you want to do this you want to make those movements with your hands it is your brain right. So the first thing that will initiate a muscle contraction is a signal from the central nervous system. So the central nervous system will send a signal, signal through the motor neuron and this signal will reach the muscle fiber. So now what happens is that so let us suppose this is your central nervous system. Now for example this person he wants to lift this dumbbell. So what will happen? A signal will come from his central nervous system and this signal will re it has to reach the muscle fibers. Now who is carrying this signal? The signal is being carried by the neuron and who will receive the signal? The signal will be received by the muscle fiber because the muscle tissues are made up of muscle bundles which are made up of muscle fibers. So the muscle fibers will receive this signal. Now in between the motor neuron 
and the muscle fiber, there is a junction which is known as neuromuscular junction. So the junction between neuron and muscle fiber is known as neuromuscular junction. So this neuromuscular junction is also known as motor end plate. So this is how it will happen. So this is a neuron, right? So this portion, the tail of the neuron, which is also called the axon. So this neuron is basically, it is being carried. The information is being carried by the central nervous system through several motor neurons. And let us suppose this is the last neuron, which is directly in touch with the muscle fiber. And this is the muscle fiber, right? Which in turn is made up of the myofibrils. Here you can see. And it also has the different, this is the sarcoplasm. Here you also have the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So all those things are present inside the muscle fiber. So now this junction between the neuron and the muscle fiber, this junction is known as the motor end plate. So what will happen here? Here a neurotransmitter is released. So what is the neurotransmitter here? The neurotransmitter is basically a chemical called acetyl. Choline. So this chemical released will actually, that is how the information exchange will take place. Now just look at this picture. This is a magnified picture of this junction. So here this is the neuromuscular junction and this, this is the neuromuscular junction or the motor end plate. And this is the tip of the axon. So this region is the synapse. You remember we spoke about all these things when we talk about the nervous system. So now this uh, neuron will send the signals or it will send the neurotransmitters called acetylcholine which will be received by the motor plate or the neuromuscular junction. Now when this, once it is received by the motor plate then what will happen? An action potential will get generated which will spread throughout the muscle fiber. So action potential will be generated in the sarcolemma. What is sarcolemma? It is the plasma membrane of the muscle fiber. So here you have for this muscle fiber, this is the uh, membrane. So it will first get generated in the membrane and then from the membrane it will get spread it throughout the muscle fiber. Now once this action potential spreads throughout the muscle fiber, what happens is that the calcium ions which were stored in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So here if you see, this is sarcoplasmic reticulum. So now the action potential or the information or the signal has reached each and every part of the muscle fiber everywhere, right? So now the chemical, uh, the calcium, whenever this signal is received, the calcium ions which were stored in the sarcoplasmic reticulum get released into the sarcoplasm. That means this cytoplasm. So it gets released into the sarcoplasm of the muscle fiber. Okay, so now what happens when it's once it is released into the sarcoplasm? So now what is happening? You know, one, as soon as there is a signal from the central nervous system, and once that signal reaches the uh, reaches all the parts inside the muscle fiber, there will be a lot of calcium ions which will get released into the sarcoplasm. Now, when there is too much of calcium ions being present in the sarcoplasm, things will start to change. Now we will see how this calcium ions can cause contraction or how can it cause binding between actin and myosin. So as I said, this is a magnified image of what is there inside the muscle fiber. So these are the sarcoplasmic reticulum, these structures. And this area is the sarcoplasm, that is the cytoplasm inside the muscle fiber. So too much calcium, too many calcium ions will be present in the sarcoplasm. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.